Hello and welcome to this PCSX2 video where I will show you how to set up version 1.7. So, off the bat, there's a few things I want to say. First of all, this video is not condoning piracy. The game that I'll be testing, I do physically own. On top of that, I own not, not one PS2, multiple, but I do have a PlayStation 2 console as well. So this is for educational purposes, so just bear that in mind. Next thing. Version 1.7 technically is not out yet. This is a development build. The development builds honestly work very, very well. Those are some of the ones I use a lot of the time. But ju just bear that in mind when the you know official version comes out or 1.7 officially comes out or whatever it is by then, I will create another video for that. But I wanted to create it because I know a few things have changed. And I wanted to get that done, then create a few separate videos for it. I had to set up a few controllers. I know a, a lot of the community are having a few issues around that sort of stuff. And I thought, you know what, it's probably needed. And it's been a lot of while since I've done a PCSX2 video. So this is what this video is. So first of all, let me go ahead and open up my web browser and just search for PCSX2. Go to this website. There'll be a link to that in the description. And next, what you want to do is go to a download. And if you go to like I was saying, the releases, the latest version is 1.6 as of creating this video, which is 7th of December. But if you go to download, just hover over it and go to Windows in development, you get all these other versions. So the further down you go, the older the development build. I'll just say go for the you know the latest one, the click download, take you to this page, and then on there just get the top one and click download. And it will download the other seven zip file. So what you need is seven zip. If you have something else that you know can extract seven zip files, feel free to use that. But I'm just gonna use seven zip, so go to seven zip and just download whichever one you need, 32-bit or 64-bit. Again, if you go to your computer system properties and it'll tell you what OS you have. Say that I've got a 64-bit OS, that means I can use 64-bit and 32-bit applications. Doesn't really matter. If you have a 32-bit operating system, you have to use this one. And if you happen to be on ARM, but I'm not too sure how well ARM will even work with PCSX2, so it's gonna be one of the top two. So I'll download this one. I'm gonna open it up. I'm gonna install it. I've already got it installed to be fair, so you'll probably recognize that which it did. Just click install, it's just gonna override it. And that's fine. Okay, so now that we've done that, the next thing that we need is the PS2 BIOS. So if we Google PS2 BIOS, and there's a bunch of different places that you can grab hold of it from. If I just go to this top link and click download file, download PS2 BIOS. Download, and there we go. Again, for legal purposes, make sure you extract it yourself. I'm just showing an easy way of getting it, but I have personally you know extracted it for my own personal use i've got a ps2 console so just bear that in mind and here we go it's right here the other thing is you will need a game you know feel free to either put the disc in you can play it that way which is pretty cool you can just use an iso and the multiple ways of getting the iso not really you know covering that you know right now but just right click your ps2 bios and click extract uh, this is just using the built-in extractor and we get all these files. I'll show you what to do with them in a second. Right click the PCSX2 and hover over 7-zip. If that doesn't appear, restart your computer. It should do because we've installed 7-zip. Click Extract 2 and it shouldn't take too long. There we go. I'm going to rename it to PCSX2. And in here, we will just launch up this PCSX2.exe. And for language, we can go system default, which will be English for me, but you can override it if you want to. Click next, and you, you can you know, go to the configuration guide and read me if you want to, feel free to do that. It's picking up no BIOS, and it's expecting the BIOS from the folder that this EXE is from. So the, in there, the folder called BIOS, nothing there. So what we wanna do is go to where we extracted all the BIOS files, just press Control A, select them all, 
just click you know copy go to pcsx2 bios paste and there we go now refresh list they will all appear Let's see if i can increase the size of this window it's not letting me that's fine and i'm just gonna do version 2 europe and use default setting that's fine and you can also browse to a different you know you know to a different folder if you want to but i like to leave it as default and click finish and here we go it's all launched we could start the game now there's a few other things i want to show you so if you go to config these two areas i mean general settings i mean you can have a look at it but honestly this stuff i would generally recommend that you leave as default you for the most part don't want to be messing around with it unless maybe you have a specific you know fix that you want to do okay so there's memory cards and again leave your default but make sure you've got a couple of memory cards created it should do it automatically and in graphic settings you can change the renderer from OpenGL, which is an open source renderer to directx which is microsoft exclusive team of software software trust me you don't really want to be doing that you ideally want a renderer and you can change the interlacing as well the texture filtering and this is probably one that you'll want to change leave your native run it on your computer whatever game you're going to run see how it works if it runs smooth and no hiccups slowly just increase the internal resolution it'll make things look a bit sharper and you can change the anisotropic filtering so this is just basically helps uh, obscure angles certain like objects can look a bit like the texture on it can look a bit so like, blurry and skewed it helps that fix that problem but again i would recommend just run it make sure the games work then you know enable it there's some hacks here as well feel free to have a look at these shaders and you know a bunch of other stuff but for the most part we're going to leave that and there's also audio settings which again i recommend leaving it but feel free to override it and you can go into different stuff as well so stereo which is default you can even go to surround sound as well i've got two speakers connected to this setup so i wouldn't need to change that and if we go to game pass settings this is one of the big ones for this for you know this video i'm going to keep it simple and i'm going to go to pad one and you can config pad two i'm going to have separate videos and i have to configure all the different you know controllers all the different you know devices with it and what you do is just click one of these and then you just well that's triggered me moving the mouse so if i want to remove that I can just right click delete selected so if i wanted to assign the space bar to l1 press it make sure you don't move the mouse press space there we go and space bar has been allocated to l1 i'll remove it because by default it just maps it to like an xbox controller x input and because i'm going to be using a xbox one controller that's fine like i said i will create a separate video covering you know mapping and setting this up for different controllers like playstation xbox that sort of stuff so feel free to check that out so i'm going to click apply okay and in config the rest of the settings feel free to have a look at multi-tap if you're going beyond two controllers for games like fifa and like the wwf back in those days maybe it was wwe by that point but it's wwf i believe and so the wrestling games that was pretty cool as well so now to launch a game up you go to system boot iso and my game is in downloads chrome crash nitro card double click that it'll start launching up it can take a bit of time just bear that in mind so just wait patiently and i'm gonna turn my xbox controller on as well there we go i can go up and down because i've got the xbox controller on Slow the volume down a bit. It was a bit loud. Indeed. So you can increase the window size by pressing that. If you want to go max screen, you just double click the screen or press Alt and Enter on the keyboard. And if you press Escape, you'll do this. 
it, it's just basically sort of pretty to sleep mode and you can just press escape again or go to system resume so if i press escape it resumes again so, so that's fine if you accidentally press it i've done it several times so I'm skipping all this and let me just get into a match you know a race and show you we're working but apart from that it's all good to go there's a couple other things i want to show you so no crash nitro cart you know save for present go to save memory card is unformatted so do you want to format yes are you sure you want to format yes you only have to do this really the once on the particular on one game and then it'll be in a format that the other games can use as well so you, if you increase the internal resolution you help with the jagged edges as well as well the anti-aliasing as well so if i go to so let's say if I try and you know increase the res. Let me see if I can do that whilst in game. Do, 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 do. I, I don't know if while I'm recording it'll even run smoothly if I try and do that. That's at a pretty high res now. So as you can see things are running a lot, you know, things are looking a lot nicer. And in terms of frame rate, we're still getting 50, which is what PAL is. Uh, let's go to single player. Just quick race is fine. Let's go normal difficulty. Stick with the basic track. I'll go with Crash Bandicoot. Start a new game. Love this game so much. Crash Nitro Card, Crash Team Racing, uh, Crash Tag Team Racing as well. They obviously got the remastered ones that came out not so long ago. So we're all set up, you can end the video here, or you can just watch me play for a bit, which is what I'm going to do. Well, play, I'm not going to watch me myself play. Coming through. I'll get this box over here. I can never remember how to do this slide properly on here. He's gone. Got two more people to overtake, and then I'm number one. Tiny, Tiny is generally a faster character in general. He's one of those faster ones. Ooh, exploded the box. Which is nice. Yes. Ooh, I almost put the TNT up. That helped a lot. Yep, I was a fourth place. Wasn't even in the top three. So the okay, so I'll so the one done. The other things I want to show you is pretty darn cool. Uh, let's go over here. So let's say you're playing this in the middle of the race, you pause. What you can do, uh, this is separately something else. You can actually capture some video and screenshot, that's pretty cool. But you can go to system, you can pause it, which is what the escape button does. Or what you can do is save a state. So if I go to save a state and you just, you know, whatever slot that is, and it is F1, or we can choose a slot, and it's the state has been saved. So watch what happens if, let me confirm, we have a save state for this game we do. 
if I close this down and close this down as long as you know you don't start deleting this PCSX2 folder you can move it around to be fair that one but let's say if I go over here launch it up and I go to system and I go to boot ISO and by default it automatically you know has the previous ISO selected presuming you haven't renamed or moved it or you can go to browse and do that as well or you can change to disk so as you can see it's gone to the main menu but if I go to system load state if I go to the load state it picks up exactly where I left off, which is fantastic. That was, you know, one of the many things that you couldn't do with PS2 back in the day. You couldn't just, you know, okay, be in the middle of a race, be in the middle of a match or whatever it is, and be like, oh, okay, you know, I've got to turn it off. Maybe you've got to go out. Maybe, you know, food's ready. Whatever it is, maybe you want to come back later. You, you, you've had to keep playing it, leave it on, or turn it off. But now you can actually pause it. And you can do this for each game as well, so that's fantastic. So that's it for the PCSX2 emulator. If you have any questions, feel free to pop me a message. There'll be a link in the description to the Discord page. Almost 6,000 members there now. And feel free to post there. There's an emulation section and there's a PCSX2 channel. So pop your message there. And that's it. I'll be creating more emulation videos and I'll see you all soon. Bye bye.